Hello and welcome to uh, this Define Tomorrow session where we're going to be looking at Microsoft Teams and the art of the possible. Um, just a quick overview of what we're going to show you. Uh, after some uh, brief introductions, we're going to have a look at the, uh, the business landscape at the moment uh, and how Computer World approaches um, how we implement uh, Microsoft Teams and the Microsoft 365 um, environment within our clients. Um, and then we're going to get into the demonstration of the art of the possible. Uh, we'll finish up uh, with a, a brief uh, summary at the end. Just introduce myself. I'm Anthony Charman. Uh, I'm a business consultant that works in the Microsoft 365 team here at Computer World. Um, and I'll be doing the kind of introductions and the topping and tailing of the presentation. Um, but the majority of the work will be done by Megan Warren, um, who is our marketing manager, who is the main person, the uh, main organizer of Define Tomorrow but also in her spare time works as an Office 365 business coach. So works alongside myself um, with organizations, showing them what's possible with teams and providing a lot of training in that area. So the current business landscape, you probably knew that I wouldn't get far into this presentation without mentioning coronavirus, but it's been a real um, kind of eye opener for all of us over the last 10 months to look at how we cope with coronavirus. All of a sudden, the things we've been talking about with mobile workforce and flexibility um, have really come to uh, in, into their own because we're not heading into offices anymore. We're working from home and having to work from home, and we're having to uh, adapt our IT systems to cope with that environment. So flexible working, different ways of communication have been thrust upon us. Um, and therefore, to start with, we're in this environment of survival where we're just buying laptops and getting people out um, working from home effectively. Um, and now as time has gone, we've been able to look at how our businesses are operating and start to uh, tune our processes to work more effectively in this new, uh, new paradigm. So looking at how we can decrease overheads, how we can uh, make our transactions more efficient. We're in this um, scenario, we have been a long time in the IT world where we're bridging between two, two different worlds. On the left-hand side of, uh, of this, the Clifton end of the uh, Clifton Suspension Bridge, that um, represents the kind of old environment that we're working in, the kind of legacy environment, where everything was secure because it was locked in a computer room. Um, all of our um, network, our local area network, provided the security we needed for, uh, for people working out um, flexibly. And um, we only let those people join the network um, via VPN so we had security kind of within our control. In this new environment where we're forced to have people working from home uh, and this kind of cloud enabled environment, uh, we have to treat things very, very differently. Um, and this is the environment in which Microsoft 365 is, uh, is delivering all of its applications and all of its, uh, its power. So here's, here's the wheel of, uh, of opportunity from Microsoft. Um, and this is uh, really showing us some of the applications that are available, uh, although this is a kind of a moving target at the moment. So a lot of those applications are very useful to our business, um, but it's potentially shadow IT um, in, uh, you know, on steroids, as people say, um, because a lot of these applications can potentially enable people to build their own business solutions within their own environment without any kind of interoperability. Um, and any discussion with um, the IT department. So this is the, the, uh, the set of applications that we're delivering into our uh, employees' environments, and we need to do that in a controlled way. So Microsoft has a, a methodology, um, and my, when we're deploying um, a Microsoft 365 environment, there are two key aspects to it. Um, down the right-hand side of that, um, that diagram, you can see the technology aspects. But down the left hand side, you see the business aspects um, and they go hand in hand. They're kind of interwoven throughout any project that we're working on. Um, but they all start at the top um, with that middle block there, which says the stakeholder art of the possible workshop. And that's what we're going to show you today in order to get people to make the most um, effective use of the applications um, that are available within Microsoft 365. We need to show them what is possible. So it stimulates their thoughts about how those different applications and different mechanisms for uh, meet, you know, doing meetings and managing meetings can be used within their business. 
So the art of the possible, we're going to move into that presentation. This is something we do with uh, a lot of our clients um, to actually just whet their appetite for what can be done within Office 365. And to start with, we're going to look at some of the issues around departmental collaboration. Traditionally, business has been uh, built around email um, and uh, therefore everything to do with uh, the one, everything we do seems to end up in our email. And that's not segmented in any way. It's, uh, it's all just piles into our inbox, whether that be a spam email from a, an organization, um, whether that be a, a important email from our clients or something from our um, colleagues. Then we're then going to look at um, booking issues with booking meetings and having efficient meetings, especially when we're working from home, and then um, at how we can make our meetings more efficient. So Megan's going to take us through an overview of communication, uh, including how we can use the functions like chat, video meetings and callings in Microsoft 365, how we can use the uh, meeting management there, and then look at how we can uh, co-author documents to make uh, our processes more efficient. Thanks, Megan. Perfect, thank you. I will just uh, share my screen so everyone can see that and hopefully you can see that on uh, screen now. Um, so before we get started to talk about how Microsoft um, tools and applications are helping with these issues we are seeing that Anthony just covered, um, I just wanted to break it down. So we've got the collaboration piece and included in that collaboration piece is the communication piece that people struggle with, whether it's because people are just communicating in their own ways and not the um, standard way. Um, as Anthony said, everything's in the inbox and that's not where we want it to be. So as you can see on screen here, we've got a diagram that we call our loops of communication. And the two that I'm going to focus on um, for this scenario are the outer loop and the inner loop. The outer loop of that communication is that all company communication, whether it's announcements to the business, um, making sure that people actually see those announcements is a crucial when you're um, telling the people in the business something that will potentially affect the way they work. Um, some things are just broader communication. Maybe it's just a bit of knowledge you want to share with people. So we're going to focus on how SharePoint and Yammer work to help um, enhance that outer loop of communication. And then we're going to look at the inner loop, which is like departmental communication, cross departmental communication, and maybe even project teams that work together. And we're going to look at how Microsoft Teams helps with that as well. So looking at this outer loop of communication first, we're going to look at SharePoint. And as you can see here, I've just got a SharePoint open and SharePoint has advanced over the years. It used to be something that was really hard to edit for people to use. It wasn't that appealing. But as you can see here, you can customize it to yourself. It's very easy to use and edit. So um, multiple people in the organization, for example, the communications team can be part of this rather than just someone in the IT team has to manage it. But as you can see here, we've got our intranet and we've got our hero banner here with all of our uh, quick links and all the information people need to use. We've got things like this. So um, when people are posting um, or when you want to communicate just an announcement here to make sure everyone's booked their holiday, we can put that on here. And then we've got some news. So when we've opened up a new branch, even things like product spotlights. So we've got different product spotlights here. So um, some news articles about new products we've got and sharing product knowledge through videos. So video has come on leaps and bounds and people seem to be using it a lot more these days. Um, but having that available for people to access on the internet is really useful as well. And then we've got different things in here um, that we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. But as you can see, SharePoint is becoming that place where all news, new articles, et cetera, are being posted so that anybody who wants to come and see any of this product knowledge knows to come to the internet here. And then equally, um, what goes hand in hand with this internet on SharePoint is Yammer. So I'm going to use Yammer today through um, my Microsoft Teams Communities tab on the side here because it does tie into Teams effortlessly. But as we've got here is Yammer. And what this is really good for is those um, all company communications that you want people to see that don't need to um, necessarily just be sent through that inbox. So we've got our all company announcement here. And this is where people um, can come to make those announcements to the organization. 
so we can start discussions and what Yammer does is it does build that community hence the name communities and teams it does really bring people together within your organization build that community whilst we can't uh, all be together at the moment for obvious reasons so as you can see we can do different things like sharing things about our summer party making sure that everyone's seen that um, we can do things like sharing polls if we want to get some feedback from people in the organization sharing polls and asking questions is a really good way to do that we can send announcements so announcements actually make sure that everyone in the organization not only sees this on yammer but gets a follow-up email as well making sure that they've seen that communication but not overloading their inbox because most of the stuff that would uh, normally go into the inbox is happening on Yammer. And if anyone wants to check what the communication and um, what's being said across the organization is, they can come to Yammer here. And just one thing that I love within um, Yammer here is the question answer functionality. So as you can see here, we've got um, a community for our stores that we have, and someone's asked a question here. People will come together to answer that question and help out their colleagues on Yammer. And once you get the answer you want, we can tick a best answer, meaning that this answer stays at the top of the um, question answers here. So anyone else who experiences that problem uh, in the future can come here, see the best answer really quickly. So Yammer does have that ability to communicate from the top down, from across the business, um, and really, uh, enhance that communication for people and it can also be a slight place to come and build that community almost as um, bringing the social element that we're all missing at the moment into here as well for that social communication. So then we've got Microsoft Teams for that inner loop of communication, that departmental communication, and of course that collaboration. So we've got simple things in here like Microsoft Chat, um, and chat in Teams, which is just that instant message um, communication that you have on other applications like Skype for Business. But it really does help that really quick, that instant communication that you're trying to have with one-to-one -one people. And we can also do that through um, calling audio and video as well. We have calls, so if you have a calling plan in your Teams, you can actually make your calls from here. Rather than using your mobile, you can do it within Teams which means that you need to do all of that communication within here to bring that external element to this as well. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail as well. But then that collaboration piece with your team, I'm going to come into this team here now. Um, and as you can see, when I minimize these, um, I've got a few different teams that I'm part of. I'm part of a sales team, a marketing team, human resources, and a couple others. And within those teams, we have these sort of subsections as such. And these are your channels. Now, channels are almost the sort of subsections of your team. Your team is the group of people that come together to work together. And the, uh, the channels are the different projects that happen within there. So as you can see here, I'm part of a marketing team, my team of department that are all working here. And then we are working on an East campaign at the moment. So every communication, every bit of collaboration on a file, for example, that we need to do about this particular campaign just comes to this channel that gives it that much more context rather than all, uh, all of our communication and collaboration happening in general and getting a little bit muddled up. So I'm going to come into my channel here and we've got our timeline here for all of the communication that's happened in this particular channel, whether people have commented on files, whether we've updated our task list, for example, or if we're just starting regular communication. So maybe I just want to see how everyone in this team's getting on with the project. I can just come in here tag everyone so they get that notification to make sure they don't miss it because that is uh, a key point of this when you do tag people they get a notification i can say how is everyone passing on with the uh campaign i can do fun things like add gifts everyone loves a good gift so um i'm gonna put this one just because it you know it's a good gift to put and I can send that. So now everyone in that team will see that notification, will come into this channel and will respond to me and we can have that communication about the project in here as well. 
So post is really good for that. We can also um, do things like praising people on here, which is really nice um, to share with the teams. But what we also have is the ability to co-author documents on um, Microsoft Teams as well. So when we talk to a lot of organisations about how they co-author documents or collaborate on documents, um, we get uh, multiple answers, but the two ones that come up the most are we either email it out to everybody, um, they all make the changes and bring it back to me, or we just send it to the next person and they then make their changes. Alternatively, the other answer is um, we save it on a network share. Um, and when I want to go in it, I have to tell Anthony to get out of it so I can edit it, tell him when I'm finished and then he can go back into it there. They are time wasters, they're not helpful, they don't let you collaborate um, effectively. But what Microsoft Teams does is if I open up this cream egg toasty uh, recipe here, and uh, I, I have yet to try it, I've opened this up so many times, but I've never actually tried it, so I feel like I'm going to have to one day. But once this loads here, and this is just a Word document, you can do the same things I'm about to do here on an Excel document or a PowerPoint presentation that we've got. But what we can actually do here, if I just close that quickly, is I can actually click into this Word document and I can edit it within Microsoft Teams as, um, as we speak. So I can come in here and make some edits if I want to. But as you can hopefully see here, I've got Anthony's initials in the top uh, corner, which tells me he's also in this document at the moment. And I can actually see his cursor on the screen where it's jumping around. And I can ho ho hover over that and see that Anthony's working there. So we're actually editing this document at the same time. And it makes sense that I can see he's working on the title slide here. I don't need to worry about that title at the moment. I'm going to come down and worry about the ingredients because I don't want to duplicate the work we're doing. So we're co-authoring that at the same time. Alternatively, I can open this in the desktop app and open it in Word and do that here if I didn't want to do it in Teams. But as you can see, it's seamless um, collaboration that we're doing here. And what we also have is a conversation tab that comes up the side. So anytime we've changed this document or we want to have a conversation about this document, we can do this in this um, threaded conversation against the document. So I don't have to make the changes in here and then go to my email and open up that long email chain about the document, try and find something or clog up my other colleagues' inboxes. What I'm doing here is I'm just having a conversation against the file. Now, if anybody wants to see the conversation, about this file they know exactly where to come it's going to be in teams against the file and they know where to come and it's not in their inbox it's not clogging that up and it makes it really easy to have that communication about this so we've shown you um, quite a lot already in terms of that communication piece and how to improve that communication. We've started with the outer loop communication with Yammer and SharePoint and how they help um, enhance your company-wide communication. But then we've also got um, the inner loop of communication, so that team collaboration and that communication piece, and this is just the starting point. So the question we get at this point is, how do we, um, how do we underpin all of this? How do we give some structure to all this communication? Because otherwise people will just use it in the way they see. So what we do is we work with your organization to understand how you communicate, what tools you are going to use, and what effect that may have on people. And we create something like this on screen that is a communications charter. So now you share this with the business and people can go through here, figure out what type of communication it is, who it will affect, if there's a specific call to action, for example. And they'll go through this sort of flow diagram and come out with the answer. So maybe they'll come out with an answer that actually um, it's purely informational, but they want to let everyone know. And that's just a Yammer post. It's not an announcement that will send that email. It's just a post and people will see that when they go back into Teams communities. So implementing a communication charter like this gives you that structure. Everyone will know how to communicate at which time. And then it also helps that when you're looking for that communication, that information, you know where to find it because you will have known that people in the organization would have followed this charter and you'll be able to find it there as well. So communications charters are really good to bring all of those different methods together to um, give it that structure and help everyone communicate in the right way. I'm now going to pass back to Anthony who's going to go over the next scenario for us um, before we move on um, to showing you how we help that. 
Thanks for that, Megan. That was um, very clear. We're now going to look at um, another case study. Uh, and this is how we find that the best thing about doing these sessions with a group of, of uh, senior people from the organization is that they can relate what we show to uh, different activities that are going in, it, in their organization. So we're going to look at a marketing case study. We're going to look at uh, how Megan goes about planning um, and managing marketing projects within Computer World and, um, and to, be, to be able to use the tools within Microsoft 365 to do that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how we can book and coordinate external resources in a very effective way and look at how we can increase the productivity of, uh, of meetings. So, uh, Megan, do you want to show us those things? Yeah, definitely. Um, and obviously, being in marketing, this is one I relate to quite a lot, but this isn't just a marketing uh, issue. Unproductive meetings are one of the first things that we always hear about when we are doing these projects. Um, a lot of people have those regular one hour meetings and they're in meetings all day and then actually at the end of the day you didn't have time to do any work because you spent all day on those meetings so what we're trying to do is first of all um give a bit of context as to don't book one hour meetings book 45 minute meetings rather than um hour long meetings and give yourself that 15 minutes after it either for a comfort break or just to actually get some of that work done before your next one but in Teams, we can book those meetings um, both internally and externally because we can work with those external participants. Um, so I'm just going to book a quick meeting with Anthony here. And as you can see, it's got my um, calendar synchronized with us here. And I'm going to click into here and add a meeting. So we'll call it. Oh. I'm going to add our attendees here. So I'm going to have Anthony, who is an internal um, participant, but I'm also going to in invite somebody from an external party as well. So um, we'll pretend this is a, yep, we'll pretend that's a uh, professional address and we'll invite them there. And as you can see, it's invited them. This details, we don't need to put in our um, meeting details like you would in something like Zoom because the teams will do that for you. But we do always recommend putting in your um, agenda in here. The worst thing you can do is send out a meeting without an agenda, without an objective. So we always recommend having your um, meeting agenda in here. I'm not going to do that at the moment because um, no one wants to watch me type that out, but I'm going to send that. So I'm now going to join this meeting um, with Anthony there and we're going to pretend um, as if there was a third person from an external meeting on here um, or an external organization and hopefully um, Anthony will join me on this meeting and what we want to show you in here is just some of the ways that you can make sure your meeting is as productive as possible there's a few things that teams offers you to make sure you can make that meeting productive so what we've got um, when it loads up is We've both got our um, cameras on here, as you can see. Um, but actually, if I was in somewhere that was a busy environment, maybe a coffee shop, wouldn't that be nice? Um, if I was in a busy coffee shop, or if I just had the door open and my dog running behind me, which he usually is playing with a toy, that can be really distracting for Anthony on the other end of that. So to make sure we're having as as productive meeting as possible, what we can do here is we can turn on some background effects. So I can either put on a virtual background, so it looks like I'm in a different office, um, as you can see. But I don't find these um, overly productive because if you're sat there looking like you're on a beach in a professional meeting, it doesn't help that much. What we like to do at Computer and what we prefer using, as you can see with Anthony here, is he has a blurred background. So this just cuts out any distractions behind him without putting another distraction up with a virtual background. He's just blurred that and now I won't be um, distracted by anyone walking behind him as such. You can do things like turn on live captions as well. So if you're in a noisy place, Place or maybe you're hard of hearing, we can turn on those live captions so they appear down the bottom. Um, and the one we always recommend is just record that meeting. If you record the meeting, then it means that anyone who missed it or anyone who wants to go back and watch it, maybe read the transcript, for example, can do that um, by going into another application called Stream, which we'll cover later. Um, but recording your meeting just means that you can always catch up on it or people can watch it if they need to. So we've now had a really long productive meeting between myself, or it's not been that long, sorry, a 45 minute meeting that's really productive. Um, 
between myself, Anthony and our external party. And we want to go and make sure we've got all those meeting minutes down. So I'm going to hang up from here. And whilst we were actually in that meeting, Anthony was taking uh, meeting minutes in Microsoft OneNote. So we're going to come into the um, correct team and in the correct channel and open up this marketing notebook here. So this is one of the things that when we talk to organisations is one of the worst things um, that they struggle with is meeting minutes. So when we ask them how they take their meeting minutes, the answers are either um, either, well, we get halfway through the meeting and we realise no one's taking them. So we have to go over the first part of the meeting again, unproductive. Um, one person has to take them at the same time uh, as trying to participate in the meeting. But actually, that's really difficult to do, to do both productively. Or everyone just takes their own, but then we're never really on the same page because someone either misses an action or two people think they've got the same action because it hasn't been that clear. So what we recommend is with having a notebook from Microsoft OneNote open in your campaign um, or in your channel, sorry, that you can go into that you have a section for all of your meeting minutes about this particular um, channel. So I come into meeting minutes and you can see I've got all my meeting minutes from this um, team that I've got and in here we've just got a set standard we've got our agenda our meeting minutes and then we've got our actions here that we can see if we didn't want one person to take those because as we said it's really hard to actually be productive in both taking the minutes and participating in the meeting um, multiple people can actually come into this one note in the channel in the team and edit these at the same time so people can come in here if you give multiple people access they can come in here and edit them so it's not just down to one person so one note's really good for that meeting minute functionality to enhance the um, productivity of the meeting to make sure we've got everything down. But what we also want to do is we don't want to leave these actions here just in the OneNote because people can potentially forget about them if they don't um, come into this OneNote all that often. Um, so what we want to do is we actually want to put this into a project planning task management application that assigns people the particular tasks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, my next tab in this channel, and that is my task list using Microsoft Planner. So Microsoft Planner is a task management application. And as you'll be able to see in a moment, I'm going to be able to go in and add some tasks to this group um, and to this plan and actually assign them to different people. So I'm going to come in here. I've got my um, tasks noted from the OneNote that, I, um, that we took and the actions from there. And I can now follow up with this. So I can say, um, follow up with the sales team for virtual merchandiser. I can add that in. I can come in and say, book meeting with product development. And I can add these in. I can then come into here, into the task. I can assign it to um, people. I can set due dates on this and all of this information that I'm adding because I've assigned it to Anthony, he will actually get a notification in his activity in Teams to say that he's been, he's been assigned a task in this particular um, plan. I can say that this is a complex task and then I can add a subject list to this as well if I wanted to. So Anthony's now going to get a notification in Teams to say that he's got some tasks assigned to him in here and he can go and see them. Obviously, we set the due dates on those. So anytime a um, task is late, Anthony will get an email to say that he has an overdue task. So he'll be reminded that he needs to do this. So not only have we had a productive meeting there using um, some of the tools within meetings within Teams, um, making sure that meeting was only 45 minutes to make ourselves more productive throughout the day. But we've then made sure that post meeting it's productive as well. So we took our meeting minutes in the one note that everyone can access. They all know where to find it if they ever need to go back to it, because it's always going to be in that one note. Um, and then we also took the actions from that one note and all those meeting minutes and put them into planner in a way that we can assign them to people and um, follow up with people. And of course, come into Planner to see that progress. So I can see everything that's completed now without having to have another meeting to see the progress there. So that's how we can tackle the challenge of unproductive meetings and um, people not following up with those meeting actions that we are uh, sometimes taking our meeting minutes as well. So I'm going to pass back to Anthony to go over the next scenario.
Okay, thanks. Thanks very much for that, Megan. That was a really useful session. Um, we're now going to look at another case study that uh, happens a lot in organisations. We've based this around um, HR, um, but it does happen uh, in lots of other areas of the business where we've got a shared mailbox, where lots of um, emails are coming into that mailbox. Um, in this case, it's about recruitment, but it could be about um, stationary requests and things like that. Um, and we want to kind of break that down into a proper business process. So we're going to look at how we can do that. And that demonstration is based around a, a web based recruitment application. Um, and we're going to look at how we can use some of the automation tools within Teams to uh, make that process more effective. Thanks, Megan. Perfect. So I'll share my screen again. Yeah, so as Anthony said, we're going to focus on that um, HR perspective, but obviously this isn't the only um, scenario we see this in. But what we've got here for this um, scenario is we have some roles available for people to come and work with us. Um, and what we've got is we've got an application form here that we've created through Microsoft Forms, another application within the Office 365 suite. So this is my application and I've got it in Teams here, but what we have done is we've actually embedded this into um, a web page for us. So you can see here that people can apply for it. And what we can do is people can choose um, which role they want to apply for. I uh, call this um, Joe Malone. Um, my email address is joe at cw.co.uk. Um, my covering letter is I love your organization and then I've got a LinkedIn profile here as well so I'm just going to put Joe um, me. so I'm the person that I've just uh, applied for this job I really want this job um, in Bristol and I've applied for that now what we do see is if we normally have an application form like this you'll get everyone who's applying to this you'll get recruiters trying to email that email address as well rather than doing it through an application form um, like we've just done, they just email an inbox. So we've just submitted that application form. And what we've got in the back end is we've got some automation using an application called Power Automate um, working for us. So that's going to do two things for us. As soon as someone applies, it's going to send just one email to a particular person to say that they've um, email, uh, they've applied for this job. So I'm going to come into my Outlook now and see if that's in here. Yeah, here it is, as you can see. Um, it just tells me the name of the person has applied for and then it puts in the um, job that they've applied for. And what is more, whilst I have got that application here, that's just alerting me that they've applied. That's going to prompt me to go into the next um, application that we can use in Teams to see their full application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my channel again and into my recruitment tracker. Because the other thing that this automation tool was doing for us in the back end was actually putting this application into this list um, for me. So this is using an application called Microsoft Lists. And what this does is this puts in all this information from myself and my team to go in and view and change um, as we go. So as you can see here, I've got all of um, the people that have applied for jobs, which position they've applied for, the progress of it as well. And when I scroll down to the bottom, as you can see here, I've got a um, the new application that we just put in there. I can click into this. And I can now go and um, view their application in their LinkedIn profile. If they attached a resume, I could see that there. And once I've actually looked at their CV and I think they're ready to go to the next stage, which is a phone screening, I can say that um, Barry is going to be the overall recruiter. Their phone screen date I can come in and set here. So I can say that it's going to be next Tuesday. I'm not going to do it at midnight because that seems a little bit harsh. 10:30 uh, a.m. and um, I will be doing the phone screening with them. Once they get through to this stage, I can then go and update the interview information and we can have um, all of this information in here now. Now, anybody who wants to go and see where um, Jo is on her progress of her application within this recruitment um, team in the HR team, they can come into this list and see that and see the comments here or the updated information here. We can also have a conversation about this particular 
um, candidate here as well. So if I wanted to speak to the team about it and say, um, Barry, this looks like a great candidate need to um, interview ASAP, I can have that conversation. So I'm not having to then go into my email and have a conversation about Joe in email and then probably lose that in my inbox. I can just do this against a particular candidate in my list in Microsoft Lists here. What we can also do in here is we can um, group it by different applications or um, statuses, for example. So I can group by a role. So I want to see everyone that has applied for um, this account manager role and where they are. So we've already got a top pick here with Jamie Jones. They're our top pick for this and I can go and see that. Alternatively, I can group by um, the application status. So um, if they're, oh, is that gonna work? There we go. Um, I can uh, group by this application status so I can see that. So um, this is a really good way for you to come in, add a lot of detail into a particular thing. And like Anthony said, we have just used this for a HR example at the moment, but you can add a lot of information in there. You can add images and you can customize it to work for you and the list you need. So in that example, we showed you how you can set up a Microsoft form to gather that information, um, for example, a um, job application, how we've used Power Automate in the back end to then send just one email to somebody and then put that information in Microsoft Lists and how we can use Lists to track that information and the progress of this um, across the board and within our whole team and our whole channel there. So I'll pass back to Anthony for um, I think one of our last examples that we've got here. Yeah, so thanks for that, Meg. We're now going to look at a, um, a sales case study, uh, and we're going to look at a couple of products here that help us to unlock information from uh, data that's held in your organization. So maybe a kind of sales analysis piece. Um, we're going to look at how we can use uh, elements of teams to coordinate external resources uh, and get them uh, working on projects for us. Um, and also we're going to um, finish off by looking at Microsoft Whiteboard, which is uh, an excellent mechanism for uh, you know supporting interactive discussions, uh, but it's particularly relevant in a kind of marketing environment or um, with people, uh, architects and things of that nature. Thanks, Megan. Perfect. So the first example, as Anthony said, we're going to look at how we can um, extract data and how we can actually use this to um, give us some output um, from that data, because obviously we're collecting it for a reason. We want to be able to use it. So what we've got here is we've got our um, sales figures for last year, and we're trying to look at how we can use the information that we've got here to um, actually enhance and impact what we do this year for ourselves for our uh, Easter campaign that we've got going on. So we're using an application called Power BI and what this does is it allows you to um, take data and visualize it in different um, forms as you can see here we've got many forms. So what I can see here is I can see all of the sales we had which store they were in and week on week what we had. And then I can actually click on those. If I want to see this one, for example, I can click on that to actually drill down the information a little bit more. So I can see the um, location and week by week. But here I can actually see what products were sold at that location across the um, time. So I can see which um, how many caramel eggs were sold, how many cream eggs, how many mini eggs, example for example. And here I can see the cream eggs were only four. So I can see that's a lot lower than maybe um, something here. If I click on that, we've gone to 24 there. So I can then use this data to look at what changed last year, um, looking at our OneNote notes that we took, obviously, um, to see what changed to understand why that was so low there. So I can use this information now to help improve my sales for this year. Um, and hopefully not make the same mistakes I did um, last year. And as we can see here, we've just got the um, example, uh, the data week on week and what we sold. And then of course, an overview of how many orders we had last year in total and how many orders we've had this year in total so far. Um, so we can see that. So Power BI is really useful to take that data and actually use it to help you um, make some informed decisions, for example. So we've used this data as a sales team and we're now ready to get our store ready um, for this year's Easter campaign coming up. So what we want to do is we want to work with our virtual merchandiser 
to help us um, plan our store. So we're going to book that and it is an external resource. Um, so rather than booking it through a normal Microsoft uh, Teams meeting, as we would have done um, with um, the meeting we did earlier, we want to book them in at a time we know they're going to be available. So what we've got here when I come into um, this is we're using an application called Microsoft Bookings here. And what this does is it allows people to book your resources, maybe if that's an external resource, for example, um, at times that work for them. So as you can see, I want to book my virtual merchandise for 30 minutes. I can come into here and see um, the times and the dates at work, and I can choose which staff member. So I can choose uh, Debbie. And I can see that Debbie's actually only free at this time at quarter past two. And that's not going to work for me and my team. So I either need to change the um, person to Barry, for example, or I need to find another date with Debbie that works. So as you can see here, I can click on that. I can add in my details to book this and put any notes and then I can book that. So that will now book a meeting and I'll get a automatic Microsoft Teams meeting put into my calendar, which at this time on the 10th of December at quarter past three, myself, my team and my virtual merchandiser will all join to um, have that meeting. And during that meeting, um, we might want to come together to edit or work on a document or um, work on a whiteboard, for example, um, to come together to sketch some things out. So this would obviously be something that naturally 12 months ago when you're trying to do this you would have done that in person around a real whiteboard and you would have all had a pen each and you're all contributing to that we miss a lot of that these days um, but Microsoft whiteboard as you can see here is a great application that replaces this functionality so what I've got here is I've got on the um, left hand side I've got some example templates which um, come straight from Microsoft whiteboard in this template um, view here and we can make sure we've got a really effective meeting because we've got our um, meeting plan here. We've got our project plan for this store that we're trying to set up. And then we're also taking some follow up actions, which we'll take from here and put them into our planner to make sure that everyone follows up on that. So we've got these example templates. What we have also got is um, I've put in my own stuff here. So I've got a little brainstorming section for the team to come into. Um, and we've got a document here. So this is our shop floor plan that we've got here. And when we're on this call with the virtual merchandiser, we all want to be able to come here, draw on this, for example, and um, be able to edit this document. So hopefully this will work for me. There we go. So I can come in here and I've got a pen here, but obviously if you don't have a pen, you can use your mouse. Um, you just need to be slightly more skilled at this. Um, but I can come in and if Anthony was in this whiteboard at the same time, he'd be able to come in and draw over it at the same time. So we can plan things. So I can say here, 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 and here we want um, little stands for our cream eggs. We can come over here and brainstorm about this. So as you can see, this is just a really good way for everyone to come together, edit that whiteboard at the same time when we can't actually be around a table sort of brainstorming around a document, around a big whiteboard, for example. Microsoft Whiteboard allows us to do this. We can then tie this into Teams once we filled out all this information and had a really good meeting with the virtual merchandiser. We can then choose to share this to our team. So if we want to access it again, we can go and do that. But that's how we can use Whiteboard to all come together and work on that um, with each other there. So in that example, we've shown you how we can um, use our Power BI data that we've extracted from maybe our ERP system to understand what our figures were for last year and how we can improve that this year. We looked at using Microsoft Bookings to book external resources. And then whilst we're on that call with an external resource, how we can use Microsoft Whiteboard to come together, whiteboard, brainstorm, um, edit documents in here as well, PDF documents in here as well at the same time. So now I'm gonna pass back to Anthony for our last um, scenario. Um, so back to you, Anthony. Yeah. Thank you very much, Megan. Um, really interesting session that I think there would be a lot of people out there who can see how you can use some of those technologies in your own uh, environment. Uh, and I think that's a really useful part. And um, one of the things that you will have thought about when, when um, probably throughout uh, the lockdown and things like that 
is you know just how are you managing time outside of work and uh, getting that work-life balance correct uh, and i just really wanted to promote a session that megan's doing with barry coombs another one of my colleagues um on employee well-being looking at how you can use the uh, my analytics tools within microsoft teams to uh, to look at personally look at your work-life balance um, and for it to give you some kind of ai driven um, pointers into how you can manage your time more effectively how you can make sure that uh, you're creating efficient meetings that you're uh, networking with the most appropriate people for for your work um, so that's another session that you'll find on the uh, define tomorrow schedule um, which i would thoroughly recommend just in summary from this session um, I, I think it's been really useful to look at different case studies from across the business um, and I hope you've all found something really useful in all of those. Um, I just want to emphasize this point that implementing Teams is, is a business project, not a technology project. Sorting out identity and sorting out e e email and things like that uh, are very kind of technical projects. As soon as they, we move into um, implementing Microsoft Teams and Office 365 within a business, we're talking to a completely different set of people. Um, and there's that real benefit of showing them stuff, a kind of show and tell, so they can see how it applies to the business and start to, uh, their minds thinking outside of the box to see how technology can really make them more efficient as an, an organization. Um, Computer World can help you with that. We can deliver a kind of customized out of the possible session to a group of your management. Um, and we're offering that um, you know, a, as a free activity at the moment. Uh, and you can find details of that on our uh, migrate365.co.uk website um, just under the link slash um, AOP or Art of the Possible. So thank you very much for joining the session. I hope you've all found something really useful in there and uh, look forward to meeting you in the future. Thank you very thank much. You.